and all the board members of Can Survive Malaysia Bahad. Now, in early July, Dr. CB called me and uh, said he would like to come and meet, uh, meet me. So I said, Dr. CB, you know, PJ come to KL traffic jam. <laughs> you know, you're a busy doctor. Why you want to? Can, can we talk over the phone? He said, no, no, this one I must see you in person. Oh, so I thought, well, what is so important? So I said, yeah, yeah, okay, of course. I welcome you to come to my office and meet up with me. So when I went to meet him in the meeting room, I was surprised to see there were nine or ten person there. <laughs> All of his board members. And uh, they said they came to invite me to come and uh, say a few words. Or they use the word officiate this. So I told them, I told them why me? I am not a, you know, not a healer. Uh, so I said, I'm not qualified to actually speak in this. You want me to come, I'm happy to come. And, uh, but they convinced me that I'm qualified. <laughs> so here I am. I'm not sure I'm qualified to speak on uh, but never the. Uh, out of uh, great respect for Dr. C.B., I agree to officiate this conference. Now, uh, I'm delighted to officiate this 9th Malaysia International Conference on Holistic Healing in Cancer, organized by Cancer by Malaysia Berhad. But to tell you the truth, uh, maybe I'm too busy, I don't read uh, enough local newspaper nowadays. I don't even know that uh, there's an uh, organization like yours. But I must say, I must, uh, uh, I must uh, compliment all of you. I think this is a great thing. I think uh, people who suffer from cancer, uh, who are undergoing treatment, uh, who are in the early stage, or whatever, uh, an organization like this would be good. And it would be good for their families to learn more about cancer, and we all know cancer is a terrible disease. Uh, I want to say this. Uh, last month, I was, I think it was a few weeks ago, I was on a flight from, uh, two, three weeks ago, I was on a flight back from London. So the, the chief steward asked my, my assistant, is Tan Sri having cancer? <laughs> so my assistant said, no, why? Oh, I think Tan Sri is attending some cancer thing. <laughs> so I think maybe someone will know about this. <laughs> so, so I would like to say, uh, I'm blessed, you know, I don't have cancer. But I have challenges in life, you know, a lot of challenges. Uh, I don't have cancer, but I have a skin problem. I have psoriasis, but it's under control. And, uh, so all of us have challenges. <clears throat> now I'd like to say this here, that I'm a vegetarian for the past four years. <clears throat> Some of you are aware, or you may be aware that I'm a strong supporter of Suji Foundation, a Buddhist, <clears throat> a Buddhist organization they focus on charity and they've done great charity work around the world. Uh, they help in 97 countries or 98 countries. They have about 55 offices and their offices are, I mean when I say offices means their facilities. They have great hall, they have, uh, well it is a very impressive organization. I know about this organization maybe seven, eight years or ten years ago. I used to, uh, I read about them, met their people, was very impressed with them, and uh, I've always been a donor to them, but never participate in the, uh, whatever they do. <clears throat> so four years ago I was invited, I was invited many times to visit their headquarters in Hualien, where the master is actually a Buddhist nun, She's about 82 years old, 81, 82 years old. And I read so much about her, what she has done, even before going. 
so I always say what she has achieved and from what her members told me, I say she's a living goddess with what she has achieved. Now she built this organization, she never left Taiwan. But she has 55 offices. When I say these offices, they're a huge building. Somehow they managed to gather a lot of support. And, uh, and they do charity in 90 old countries and their charity work is truly impressive. So because of that, I thought, well, maybe I should go and meet this. Since I think she's a living goddess, I should go and meet, should go and meet her and pay my respect. So I went. And three days of you there, uh, we have meal there. So every day is vegetarian. So I thought, you know, what's wrong with vegetarian? It's quite good. And then when I met her, she actually, after the saying, you know, the conversation, and uh, of course there are many people there, one of the things she said to me is, you should be a vegetarian. It is very good for you. And uh, she's a big believer in the environment. So she asked me to be suggested as a vegetarian. And I said, yeah, I said, Master, I will try. You know, uh, I will try. But, <clears throat> but on the way back in the plane, I decided that uh, I decided then and there that I would do my best and try to be vegetarian. So when I came back, from that day on, from that day onward, I have been a vegetarian. Uh, initially, I must say it's very difficult. Those of you who are not vegetarian, I will tell you, the first few months is difficult. It's difficult when you have to eat with a lot of people who are not vegetarian. <laughs> None of my family members are vegetarian. But yeah. But sometimes they have to accompany, accompany me to a vegetarian restaurant, so they have no choice. But very often I have to eat with them, and I'm the only, I order my own food. But we can share some food, like say we can all have noodles without meat, without seafood, that I can eat, that all of you can eat. Then you can add your, your, your meat and seafood in. So, so it is very difficult when you see people eat, eat with business uh, association or partners. They eat a nice lobster, nice abalone. <laughs> and here I've been eating bread. <laughs> you know, uh, but, but I want to say this. Actually, there are a lot of nice vegetarian dishes. You can be a vegetarian, you won't lose anything. No loss. There's a lot of uh, great vegetarian food and great vegetarian dishes. So, and they say vegetarian helps the environment. Because they say cows take a lot of space, take a lot of what, and they, you know, they produce methane gas and this and that. So, but the most important thing, the environment is secondary. But I think for all of us to be vegetarian, our health is number one. And I believe, I truly believe that there's a lot of toxin in the meat. Now I must say, I started life. One of my earliest ventures is I brought McDonald's to Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I must tell you this story. My mother was very, very unhappy because she's a Buddhist that believes that Buddhists should not eat beef. So she said, how can you be selling meat to like, you know, beef? So I said, you know, this is a big business opportunity for me. You know? So I said, okay, as a compromise, I told my mother, from today onward, no beef for me. But that was before the restaurant opened, but while I was with McDonald's, I had a lot of beef burgers and everything. I tried all the food with me. So I told her, no beef for me. And from that day onward, I didn't take beef. This was like 40 years ago. So no beef for me for 40 years. And then four years ago, totally no meat, no seafood. I don't think I, I lost maybe a little bit of weight because I've always been conscious. I exercise and all this, keep myself trained. But I definitely, psychologically, spiritually, felt much healthier. Bible, Holy Quran and 
no other holy religious books. Tell us that we must love animals and say that God loves all animals and all the sea creatures. So why must we kill them for food when we have other alternatives like vegetables, plants, fruits, whole grains and many types of beans and uh, mushrooms, especially I have a lot of experience, mushroom you can transform it to very nice, it tastes like big rendang <laughs> <laughs> and lamb and uh, mutton rendang. So, <clears throat> so we don't need to eat, uh, the animals don't have to die for us. And sometimes you see how food is being wasted. I say the animals die in vain, you know, <laughs> when they waste food. <clears throat> you know, I believe that God and our divine guardians love us more when we become a vegetarian. That's my belief. I also believe that being a vegetarian is a great effective way to prevent many diseases and I think it will, it can definitely prevent and help cancer patients being a vegetarian. In fact, uh, anyone who I meet who sometimes say, you know, this, he has cancer and undergoing treatment, I always tell them, even if it's a stranger, if they talk to me, I say, be a vegetarian. You should, if you have cancer, you should be a vegetarian right away, and you can, of course, I think. Uh, organic vegetable would be good, but if you can't get organic, at least a vegetarian is already like a, you are on the path to uh, less toxin in the body. So today I would say uh, we all have listened to the success stories of courageous people who have conquered the dreadful disease, this dreadful disease of cancer by changing their lifestyle maintaining a proper diet and getting support from family and friends. They have also received proper guidance from physicians like Dr. Sibi, who believe that nothing is impossible. And I like what Dr. Sibi said just now, what the patient said, why are you worried? You are not the healer, the healer is he. <laughs> well, that is great, that is very, very true. <clears throat> that is very, very true, we have to believe, you know, because in life, somehow our guardians or play roles in our life that we cannot understand. And I'm sure if you, if you suffer from cancer, if you believe, you become a vegetarian, you are spiritual, you are religious, I think you can be healed. And of course you need, uh, you need a combination, what Dr. C.B. says is good, a combination of allopathic treatment and a combination of uh, alternative. You know, sometimes if you have to have a surgery, go and do the surgery, and then uh, natural will take over. People like Dr. Sibi, Sibi can take over after that. You know, I always strongly recommend all my friends and my family members to fully follow a vegetarian diet. But you know, I become a vegetarian. I'm 67 years old. I'm 67. Um, so four years ago, I was 63 when I became a vegetarian. So I tell my children, you know, vegetarian. I decided to become a vegetarian. It's very good. You know, I also like you all to consider to join me to be a vegetarian. They said that. When we are 63, we'll become vegetarian. <laughs> How do I do? Huh? <clears throat> you know, you know, sadly in this era, with excess of food, in fact, you can see everywhere there's wastage of food. Sometimes it's so sad to see so much wastage of food. You know, especially we know that many countries in Africa, the people who don't have enough food, 
There's even still famine in this modern world, unbelievable. So there's a great, uh, I think there must be great logistic problems and also sometimes the country, the government don't do a good job. Sometimes they suffer from drought and other natural disasters. So I learned a lot when I'm with, uh, with Suji because Suji always try to extend help to everywhere, especially this kind of thing. So sometimes we also help to send food to all these places. We help to contribute, they can buy food. So when you hear of all this and you see the waste of wastage of food in our country and in many other countries, or maybe more so in, Af in America, in USA. You know, people are exposed to many varieties of stylish food rather than healthy food. Our attention has changed from quality, healthy food to good, tasty food. People just to eat tasty food. And for good taste, they will add anything to their food to make it tasty. We should train ourselves to avoid unhealthy, tasty food. And for example, sweet food is very tasty. We all love it. But I think we should, we should look at alternatives like substituting sugar with lesser, like with stevia, with uh, other ingredients that will be more friendly, uh, uh, more friendly to our body, can be, that can be anti-diabetic. Now I must say, we, are, we also have some restaurant business. One of the red business is we own this Kenny Rogers Roasters. <laughs> we would like to sell it. And uh, I tell my people, we should uh, we, we to start a change of vegetarian restaurant and make it affordable. And the first thing they tell me, of, <laughs> the first thing they tell me is there'll be very little customer boss. <laughs> I say, well, you have to make it tasty. <laughs> we use tasty ingredient. But unfortunately, it is true. There are not many vegetarians. You know, last year, my daughter got married. And there was, we had 1,200 guests attending. So we asked everyone, you know, your diet, are you vegetarian, non-vegetarian? You know how many vegetarians out of 1,200? 20 guests. And then I'm 21st, 21. <laughs> 21 out of 1,200. So you can see, we all need to work very hard to convince more people to be vegetarian for their health. For the CV, you have to work harder. You know, according to the American Institute of Cancer Research, they got AICR, no single food or food component can protect you against cancer by itself. But strong evidence does show that a diet filled with a variety of plant food, such as vegetables, fruits, whole grains and beans, help lower risk of many cancers. That is interesting. This is a cancer institute of American Institute of Cancer Research. You know, in America, you all know the drug companies are very powerful. Uh, they don't really like alternatives. Who likes competitors? So, for them to, for the American Institute of Cancer Research to say that, it shows that they have done a lot of research. That they didn't say it here, but being vegetarian, being vegetarian can protect you against cancer. That's basically what they said here. But they didn't say being vegetarian. They said, you know, a strong evidence does show that diet filled with a variety of plant foods such as vegetable, fruits, whole grains and beans help lower risk of many cancer. 
that is confirming that vegetarian is good. So please, all of you who are not veg, please consider for your health. And maybe customers for our future vegetarian restaurants. <laughs> AICR also notes that proper nutrition in conjunction with exercise and maintaining a healthy weight is the best known recipe for cancer prevention. Of course, other than eating, we all have to exercise. We all have to keep ourselves slim, fit, we have to exercise. And uh, <clears throat> in fact, I don't play golf. You know, the giant owns seven golf courses. I never touch a golf stick. <laughs> My hobby is scuba diving and snorkeling. Wow. Even till today, I can go and snorkel for three hours. I can go in the water for three hours or four hours because I just enjoy the sea. But uh, because it helps that we own Redang. <laughs> we have Redang and then we have Tioman. Redang and Tilman has got very clear water, very nice. So I go there quite a bit. Yeah. You know, the National Cancer Institute and Cancer Research UK both provide great lists of what scientists know so far about various food and nutrients as they relate to cancer. It is evident that proper food and nutrition plays a major role in all aspects of our health. And the second point that I'd like to recommend is to follow what you believe and what your heart says rather than what your brain says. Take complete responsibility of your health into your hands rather than listen blindly to insurance companies and hospitals. Well, I have interest in uh, insurance companies but not in hospitals. <laughs> Uh, some of you may know I used to own, we used to own and control Pantai Hospital. Then we sold it. <laughs> they say always go for second, third, or even fourth opinion before you choose any treatment. Now I always tell my family members, if any time you go and see a doctor, they say must operate this cut, this out cut, I say hold on first. Let me let us go and check a bit more. You know. Because uh, sometimes, sometimes doctors like to like surgery. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ultimately, it is you who heal yourself, and not doctors and health professionals. I must also add. Ultimately, I think God Almighty or our divine guardians heal us. You know, doctors and professionals can only guide you to a certain extent. Take charge of your healing and follow the rhythm of nature. The body will heal naturally. These words I learned from Dr. C.B. <laughs> it is my fervent hope that this meaningful conference will be a platform upon to reach out to the network of practitioners, gain knowledge and integrate ideas to find a sustainable and safe solution to manage cancer. I'd like to congratulate the organizing committee of Cancer Survive on the job well done. And I also <clears throat> I also told Dr. C B Dr. C B knows him I never approached me to sponsor this. I said, I'll be very happy to help you and sponsor this the next time you have this. <laughs> I think that's all I want to say. But if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Ladies and gentlemen, Tan Sri has uh, graciously uh, allowed us to ask him any questions. Any questions? Are you single? Hello.